Gosh, I met David um, back in 82, 1982. I'd been photographing Jerry Hall, uh, Mick Jagger's wife. We'd enjoyed working together and she had um, invited me to a, to a party in his Chelsea house. And I'd gone along and out of the blue, David just appeared and Jerry Hall dragged me across to him and said, meet Tony, and uh, I got on very well with him immediately. Shook hands and I never thought anything of it. But the next day, his manager called me and asked me if I'd be interested in photographing David. And of course, I would say that David would probably be sitting at the top of the list of people I'd most want to photograph at that particular time in the early 80s. There he was, suddenly in my, standing in my studio. The session began and the picture taking was it was very, very, very comfortable because I'd asked David if I could play music. The first record I chose, because he, he said you put what you want on, uh, was a particular uh, track that he really loved. It was across 110th Street by Bobby Womack. And these are the sort of things that I believe great relationships are built on. Photographing David Bowie was quite possibly one of the better shoots that I ever did. And picture sessions are based definitely on a trust. Most of all, which is important to say, this was all analogue photography. You know, if I'd shot a lot of those photographs with David digitally, David could come across and look at the monitor and possibly not like the photographs. But you see, he had the trust in me. There was this trust that takes place when you're shooting on film. It's all in the dark. They can't see what you're doing. If I did a shoot with David, I would shoot possibly 50 rolls of colour film. And 60, 70, 80 rolls of black and white. That would all be processed, and within two or three days, uh, I would take all of that film and give it to David to look for it. If you work with David, you know, it's a, it's a collaboration. If David liked anything, he put his DNA on it, whether that was a signature or a little scribble or some kind of comment. Of course, he was part of the creative genius. Part of this show I'm doing, this unseen show, is a lot of the photographs in the show are by virtue not the kind of images that the record company at that particular time wanted to show of David. I think the photograph that I most feel proud of in this show is the one that's been used by the National Portrait Gallery in London for their permanent collection. It's a photograph of David kind of having dropped all of his guard, if you like. I think he believed the, the camera was being reloaded at the time. And so what he'd done, he dropped his shoulders and shrunk in his arms into, and he looks very fragile and rather reflective. But I knew that David was always playing a game and could act at any role and, any, any, and, and take on any appearance he wanted to. So really and truly, I believe that he was playing that role. Around 89, 90, we created a series of photographs uh, which were to be taken in the Rainbow Theatre in London. Now this was a very, very famous theatre and many, many great bands had done fantastic gigs there. So the idea was to create 12 or 15 different setups, uh, again for another tour, a Sound of Vision tour. And when we arrived at the theatre, I, I did notice that there seemed to be men with drink problems that had, were using the theatre as a kind of refuge. Um, and indeed, when I asked the manager of the theatre, he said, yes, it would become a refuge for homeless men. So I mentioned this to David, and David said, well, that's great, well, that's fine, it doesn't make any difference, we're continuing with the shoot. One of the, one of the, 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 the homeless men had shouted out that uh, he didn't think that David was as good looking as he used to be. Um, and um, David said, well, which, which particular picture are you referring to? And the man pointed out Hunky Dory, where David was very young and had very, very long hair. And David went across and put his hand over the, 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 the face of Hunky Dory and the hand over it and, and shouted that we were, all, we, were, we, were, we were all young and beautiful once, weren't we? Looking at the, looking at the homeless man. And, that, and, and, and of course the place just roared with laughter. And it was a very, it was a very warm and, and, and human moment. Also in the show, um, in the Silver Gelatine collection, there is a photograph of David in the theater. He got some bad news, and this created a sort of somewhat sort of tearful response where he was kind of hiding behind a curtain. We weren't sure 
if he was playing up or not. And I do believe he wasn't playing up on this occasion. I do believe that this was a real tear. And this was kind of as a result of his phone call he just had with somebody who uh, had given him some negative news from his lawyer or something about the ability to see, see maybe, or his child. But we, we're guessing here. What I'm particularly proud about my work with David is that I seem to have gotten up very close to him. And often what I would do, the camera would be on the tripod and I would just grab his hand, pull his hand towards me and I'd be because he was near enough and just squeeze his hand as I shot just to provoke a reaction. He was not uncomfortable with that kind of tactile um, behaviour. Photographing David on stage in a rock and roll show, it's not what I did. You know, I was, I was up, up close and personal.